Hi friends, welcome to Bookish Bliss, our virtual book club. Every week we will dig into a section of chapters in our favorite books. Let's get started. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to episode 43 of Bookish Bliss. We have a lot to discuss today. That is no exaggeration. This (laughs) week we are covering chapters 27 to 36 of Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. There will be no spoilers beyond the cover chapters, so you don't have to read the whole book to listen. You just have to be caught up on the chapters we're covering. Amanda, darling, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking a high noon, a passion fruit high noon. (laughs) Is that the vodka or tequila ones? Tequila. Of course. Of course. So good. What are you drinking tonight, darling? I am drinking a ginger ale. Nice. I love a ginger ale. I was like, I'll switch it up from a bubbly tonight to do a ginger ale. I love ginger ale. I drink too much this holiday season already. I know, literally. I'm like all wind out from even like the night before Thanksgiving. Do you remember Blackout Wednesday? We'd go out the night before (laughs) Thanksgiving. (laughs) Okay, well, I didn't go out. I was just at my family's house doing like a pizza making contest, even though we never actually did the contest part. We just made our pizzas (laughs) and ate them. (laughs) But it was still really fun. But I had way too much to drink that night. So it felt a little bit like a Blackout Wednesday without yeah crowds of people and music (laughs) how do we used to do that i have miserable no idea that does not sound appealing to me at all me neither i don't know (laughs) let me cheers you to yes episode 43 of bookish bliss and another section of iron flame cheers yay cheers i love a ginger ale like a nice i love a ginger ale crisp ginger ale (laughs) <laughs> so good that's what i'm ordering at the bars these days <laughs> literally now let's get started with the good stuff and break down iron flame part four all right so we are starting at chapter 27 and we're basically picking up right where we left off those are the kind of chapters we love leaving on the cliffhanger and picking up right where we left off so yes. violet is on her way to samara to see if zayden is okay and she does not have leave to be doing this so let's see if zayden is okay and how much in trouble she's going to be <laughs> so the epigraph for chapter 27 is By their third year, a rider must attain full and complete control over their shields. Otherwise, in moments of extreme stress, they are susceptible to being not only influenced by their dragon's emotions, but controlled by them. Mm. This is from Colonel Kaori's Field Guide to Dragon Kind. Our poor girl Violet. She's been taken over. (laughs) She's been taken over by fear. By fear. (laughs) Violet has made it to Samara before nightfall, and she is realizing that this overwhelming feelings are most likely coming from Tarn, but she is still anxious to see Zayden. The outpost was organized chaos. There was chunks of masonry, some bigger than Violet, scattered around the courtyard and scorch marks on the northern wall. Yeah, this outpost went through it. Yeah. It's basically in ruins. Violet runs into Mira, who is not happy to see Violet, that she left Beskayeth without leave. Mira tells Violet that Zayden is the reason that they still have an outpost, though, and he is currently in the sparring gym. Violet is like, oh my god, they had to make the sparring gym in an infirmary? This is how (laughs) many people are injured? She's freaking out. Yes, but Zayden is upright, and he is sparring with Garrick, and Violet is having a hard time blocking Taryn out. Zayden knows how to get Violet to block out Taryn and his emotions. He throws her in an ice cold shower, and when she's only capable of feeling cold, he tells her, put your shields up now! (laughs) And she does it. Well, he's not completely blacked out, but his emotions are dull enough for Violet to gain back some control. It's wild, though, how Taryn was so overtaken with worry and fear. Yes, he felt Sigal's anger, but I have to imagine that he would have felt more coming from her if something actually terrible happened and that their bond was in jeopardy. Well, he did get sliced open. So I think he was just feeling Sigal's anger towards that. Yeah. And her just probably jumping to conclusions and thinking the worst. Yeah. But by the time they got to Samara, 
obviously Taryn knows that Sigal is okay, but his emotions are still so high. Even Taryn, I feel like, has no control over his emotions to the point where yeah. obviously Taryn is with Sigal when Violet is in the shower and she's still having a hard time blocking him out. He still hasn't yeah. calmed down He's yet. He's so in love. He's like, no. You know, his crazy. love. <laughs> Aww. Well, Zayden is <laughs> very worried for Violet because of Varish, and she took off to Samara without leave. Zayden mm-hmm. sees that Violet is wearing someone else's flight jacket and gets very jealous. He doesn't even try to figure out whose it is logically at all. No, he doesn't. And Violet gets angry, telling him, it's Bodhi's jacket, you idiot. <laughs> and I only wore it because I was in a rush to get to you. Yeah, literally. (laughs) She's like, I recklessly ran to you and you're not even hurt because from her look over of him, he is completely fine. Yeah, he's literally fighting. (laughs) Yeah. But then Zayden shows her a mended scar running from his shoulder to his bicep, indicating that he nearly lost his arm. So it was a bad injury. Yeah. So then Violet finally softens up and Zayden kisses her and Zayden says she rushed to him because Violet loves him. We know this. this. (laughs) We know this for 20 chapters already. Like since fourth wing, we knew this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. More than 28 chapters, like through all of Fourth Wing besides 70. <laughs> like chapter one. <laughs> yeah, literally. Violet then needs Zayden and she is tempting him into sleeping with her. But Zayden doesn't want to use sex as a weapon to win her back, like he's said over and over again. Zayden reminds Violet that she is the one who cannot separate emotions from sex which is mm-hmm. a good point by Zayden. Yeah. But eventually Zayden gives in with Violet only telling him that she needs him. Then after 27 chapters of this book, they finally have sex. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and it was a good finally. scene. <laughs> it was. After the amazing sex, Zayden gives her a few options of what they can do next. But of course, Violet decides on the one option <laughs> that Zayden really doesn't want to do where they fly out together to the rendezvous point to drop off the daggers. Of course. But I love that he gave her the option to do it this time. Yeah. And she was like an excited puppy, like ready to go outside. (laughs) She's like, yep, let's go. Get up. Yeah. She literally (laughs) jumps out of bed and get a dress. He's like, okay, there goes options one and two. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Guess we're not doing them. That was a sexist shower scene though. It was so sexy. I loved it. Of course, I'm like, oh, I remember reading this. (laughs) Yeah. Chapter 28, they are off on their little rendezvous to go drop off the daggers to the flyers. And we are going to meet a new, interesting, annoying character named Kat. Here we go. Here we go. The epigraph for chapter 28 is, though Griffin writers are not capable of producing signets, They are not powerless. In fact, some would argue that they've honed lesser magic, especially mind work, into the deadliest weapon of all. Underestimating them is an error. And this is from The Griffins of Poramil, a study in combat by Major Garion Savoy. I know, that's interesting. We really don't hear too, too much about what the Griffins can actually do, but I have to imagine, Yeah. yeah, you really shouldn't underestimate them. Yeah. I know. We've been hearing this whole time, too. The dragons are stronger. The dragons are stronger. But Mm -hmm. they've held up against dragons this whole time. So they got to have some kind of offensive moves. Exactly. So in chapter 28, there's nothing like two riders in a relationship and also bonded to two mated dragons because no one cared when they left to have a midnight ride. Ooh, Mm -hmm. sexy. Taryn does not approve that they are going and is only allowing it because he said he would let Violet make her own choices after Resin, as she should, Taryn. Absolutely. Taryn is not worried about Seagal and Zayden. He said Seagal would never be taken down by a puny griffin. (laughs) Taryn's not underestimating them. He just doesn't estimate them at all, I guess. Yeah, he's like, there's just no comparison. Yeah, to Seagal. To Seagal. Taryn calls yeah. Violet a prized annoyance during the scene, which I love. <laughs> I just love the Taryn sassy comments. I know the banter between him and Violet. 
just the best. It's almost beats Violet and Zayden's banter. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Even though Taryn agreed to come to the dropping point, he will not let Violet dismount off his back. If she tries, he will launch into the air. He too remembers what happens to dismounted riders. So yeah, (laughs) even though Violet's going through it and is having these nightmares and running every day because of what happened to Soleil and her dragon... Taryn reminds Violet here that he remembers what happened to them as well. And he also worries about this. Yeah. He's like, I agreed to come, but you ain't getting off my back. You didn't agree to that. (laughs) Never agreed to that. You should have asked all the questions before we left. (laughs) Yeah. Clever little shit. Yeah. (laughs) Seven griffins, a full drift, land in the clearing. They are about a foot taller than Zayden and have razor sharp beaks. Mm. Serena and Kat, this other girl approach Zayden and Zayden drops the daggers down in front of him so if they want them they can come get them and closer to Karen and Seagal (laughs) Violet describes both girls as having straight noses full mouths light builds and glossy black hair that contrasts with their fair skin Kat has larger eyes than Serena and Violet notices how Kat is looking at Zayden there was a longing in her eyes and Violet does not like this. Oh, cute, jealous Violet. <laughs> yes, she is very jealous. She's like, oh, hell no. Yeah, why are you looking at my mans like that? We finally made up today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Zayden finally breaks the silence and says to Serena that the attacks just have to stop. Yeah, he nearly lost an arm because he hesitated, thinking that they were on the same side. He will not mm-hmm. hesitate again. Nope, he will not. And if he finds out that any more flyers are stealing daggers or that any Navarian wards are being weakened by flyer thievery, he will then stop supplying them with weapons. Mm-hmm. Serena thinks this will condemn them to death. And Violet finally speaks up and says it will condemn them all, poor Emil and Navarre, to death if the wards go down. It's the only forge for weaponry and enough raw magic to feed the venom for a century. They would be unstoppable. Yeah. Those wards cannot fall. Yeah, Violet understands why they need these weapons, and so does Zedin, but they also have to keep those wards up because the venom will then be, like Violet says, unstoppable. Violet says she is happy to see Serena made it out of resin. Kat is now glaring at Violet, and Mm -hmm. Serena says they made it out because of Violet and the lightning that she wields. So Serena's being... conversation. Yeah, Serena's being pretty neutral with Violet. She has no reason to be glaring at Violet. Violet is the reason she's still alive. (laughs) Yeah, she saved her. What was she going to be glaring about? Yeah, exactly. So Zayden agrees with Violet about the wards needing to stay up. The man with Serena and Kat says, you'd rather us die then? And Zayden says, Mm. yes, he would. Yep. Obviously choose his people first. This is a war and people are going to die. Zayden says they've lost people to the venom as well. If this makes him an asshole, then so be it. Yeah. Just because he is stealing from Navarre doesn't mean he doesn't give a shit about Navarian civilians. He doesn't care for leadership, but he doesn't just not care about everybody. Yeah, exactly. He's helping Pormil and the Flyers because he knows that the Venom need to be stopped, but he's also going to put Navarre first. Yeah, of course. Zayden is risking his life and the lives of his loved ones to get them weapons from Biscaya and complete their own forge to keep providing weaponry so that they both are ready when the Dark Wielders and Navarre inevitably come for them. Mm -hmm. But Kat's like, what? Completing a forge? Viscount Takaris gave Zayden two chances to get the Luminary, but he refuses to give him what he asks for both times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. That is interesting. Kat thinks Zayden's changing tactics because he is smitten with Violet. Zayden tells Kat she knows nothing when it comes to Violet. Oh, so obviously at this point, Violet's like, well, I know it's about me. Yes, (laughs) why am I a part of this conversation? What did I do? She's like, minding my own business. Here I am getting dragged in. Yeah, Kat's like glaring at Violet and Taryn is not having this. Yeah. So Zayden says the forge is their highest priority. And as soon as they secure the luminary, they will be operational and be able to fully supply them. But for now, they get these 23 daggers and they can suck it. Yeah, literally suck <laughs> Basically. it. Basically. Yeah, it was supposed to be. Take it or leave it. It was supposed to be 24, but he keeps one. 
<laughs> yeah, he keeps what? Serena thinks they have a year until Ven and are at Navarre's border, but Violet remembers that Brennan thinks it's actually much sooner than that. So yeah. she's preparing for the worst much sooner. Yeah. Serena agrees to do what she can to lessen the attacks at the outpost, but until Zayden can openly admit he's helping them, they won't trust him, which I think is understandable. I mean, she's not going to be able to control every griffin. Yeah, there's so many drifts that there's no way that Serena as one person can control all of them. Yeah. Zayden can't control all the dragons, so it's kind of unfair for him to ask her of that. But. Yeah, but Zayden means it. He says, you come for our wards and I'll watch you die. Whoa. Crazy. And yeah, this is not the Zayden that we see with Violet being so cute and loving and... Yeah, no. No, this is the wing leader, badass Zayden that yeah. is running a revolution. He's like, you die if you cross me and you die without me. So don't fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, so don't fucking do any of those things. Yeah. Do as I say. Violet thinks they need to get them under wards of their own. It is the most logical path. Yeah. In her opinion. Yeah, exactly. And as the group is leaving, Serena says that Taryn is still the scariest fucking thing she has ever seen. And Violet tells Serena to stay alive. She's starting to like her. And when Aww. Serena calls Kat by her full name, she knows that this is Zayden's ex-girlfriend. And it wasn't just longing in her eyes. It was a memory. Oh, shit. Thanks, Bodie. Catriona. <laughs> oh, <laughs> literally i can't oh uh, can't wait to see where that goes i know so in chapter 29 violet and zayden are gonna have a little chit chat about everything that's been going on and we're <laughs> heading back to Viscaith to see what punishment awaits violet so the epigraph for chapter 29 is cadets who are found absent without leave will be subject to court martial by their chain of command if they are not executed on site and this is from Article 4, Section 1, the Biscayeth War College Code of Conduct. Oh, gosh. Well, hopefully she's not executed on site. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm sure Varish would love that. Yes. <laughs> Violet confronts Zayden on their flight back if Kat is his ex-girlfriend, and he confirms it. He tells <sighs> Violet they were broken up before he even met Violet. And Violet is feeling jealousy, anxiety, insecurity. And, of course, our favorite Tan confirms that it's actually all three and reminds her that not one dragon chose Kat and Violet has two dragons that picked her so she needs to pull it together. <laughs> yeah, duh. You got two dragons, she has none. That's all that matters to him. <laughs> but that was an interesting detail to learn that Kat actually was at Biscayeth War College and just was not chosen during threshing and now I guess left somehow which we don't really know how she left the war college oh. and is now See, a liar. I didn't even realize that. I thought he was just saying that. Well, I have to. Like that she wasn't a writer. Well, I have to imagine that she was trying to be one if she was, if he says not one dragon picked her. Yeah. Interesting. No, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll find out more, but yeah, Taryn says not one dragon chose her. And I feel like this is how more people know who she is. Yeah. Not just being Zayden's ex-girlfriend. They obviously were in close contact at some point. Interessante. Obviously, there's a, a lot we don't know, but I feel like that confirms yeah. that she was at Biscayeth at one point. Taryn also wants to leave early in the morning so that maybe if they arrive back quickly, they will lessen her punishment because he's feeling a little bad because yeah. it's really because of him that they left early. <laughs> Do they really think Varish is going to lessen anything, though? Come on. <laughs> yeah, no. Violet asks Zayden what Takar is. Even though now Zayden wants to talk about their exes instead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Takar actually wants for the Luminary. And he tells her that besides weaponry and a private army, he wants to see her wielding lightning. Mm. But Zayden's first deal with him fell apart. He was only willing to let them use the Luminary, not take it. Which would mean that they would need to station dragons in Cordon. And he's known for collecting precious things. And he doesn't trust the cars around Violet. Brennan is already negotiating different terms. He's like, hell no. You will never use your signet in front of that man. <laughs> and I love how Violet's already a topic of conversation. Obviously, Serena saw Violet wielding the lightning. And we knew that they wanted the luminary from 
Takaris because they're not going to yeah. steal the Skyus because they need it to still be making weapons. But exactly, it's just like yeah. interesting how much they've been doing as well. Obviously, they're doing things behind the scenes while Violet's at school. Yeah. But it's interesting yeah. to see what they've been doing while Violet's been researching the wards at school. I know. Yeah. Well, we don't really get much info out of Zayden throughout this whole section of chapters anyway, because Varus is trying to keep them away and they can only talk so much. So yeah. It is fun to find out what they've been up to. Yeah. Zayden gives Violet an alloy-hilted dagger, so she's always able to defend herself no matter what. So this was the dagger that he stole from giving them to Serena. Yeah. <laughs> her trip. He's like, hide it, sew it into something, do whatever you need to do. Just he wants her always to be able to defend herself. Yeah, no matter what. So Zayden asks Violet if there's anything else they need to discuss, and she gives him a list of basically <laughs> everything that they're dealing with. <laughs> the Battle of Zola being leaked into Battle Brief and played off as propaganda, Nolan spending months saving Jack Barlow, Varish punching her shoulder out during interrogation after Dane refused to use his signet on her, but they escaped. And finally, about the signet blocking elixir, which Violet thinks she can find an antidote for, her or Brennan. So there's a lot to uh, process there. Yeah, Zayden's like, what happened to the yeah. whole working on this communication thing? And Violet <laughs> says that she can make him ask her questions for the information. <laughs> I can just picture Zayden up, 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 and she's just and this and this and this. and I mean and like, this is all since basically the last time she saw him, and she was a yeah. little concerned about his safety when she first arrived. And then they did some other things, yeah. And then they had to go drop yeah. off the dagger. So really, this is the first opportunity that she's had to really go over this information with Zayden. Yeah. I mean, she yeah. is communicating Zayden, and get it together. <laughs> Literally. But she's also like, oh, yeah, and I should probably tell you about Dane challenging me and about Ark too. Zayden knows they are no longer going to be having a fun, sexy night together before she heads back to Viscaya. No. He's like, all right, there goes <laughs> no. Ions. One and two, we need to have a chit chat. <laughs> yeah. He's like, stupid war. Yeah. Why? Ruining my life. <laughs> <laughs> As Violet returns the next morning, she feels that Zayden and her are finally trusting each other with more than just their bodies, which, thank God, because I couldn't handle any more chapters of that. I know, thank God. We're on the path upward. Yes. <laughs> so the dragons are all out, which means Varish and Atos have been alerted for, of her return. Mm -hmm. Violet asked Taryn about Indarna. It's been a couple weeks now, and she's wondering if she will wake up anytime soon, but Taryn says there's no way to tell. Every adolescent is different and sleeps for as long as their bodies need. She just needs more than most, apparently. But she is safely guarded by the elders and sleeping peacefully. So we're just waiting it out. Poor Indarna. I miss her. I know. I wonder, well, if it has anything to do with her using the time stopping so quickly together, then growing so quickly. And yeah. then I feel like she was like in and out of sleep for the longest time. Yeah. Like she wasn't fully immense in the sleep so i feel like of course it's gonna take longer yeah but violet squad is practicing on the gauntlet where tristan lost his life while they were in interrogation practice but they've only lost two others so far mm -hmm. professor emeretto is there and he informs violet that she has angered leadership he tells her that if he had favorites which he doesn't then he would suggest <laughs> that his favorite student really needs to mention that bond to her legendary dragon and work on strengthening her mental shields that another favorite student if he were to have such a thing would be teaching her to work on her mental shields and looks down at zayden's jacket that violet is currently wearing oh me too <laughs> i've always That's really awesome. liked him yeah me too as Violet walks back to her rooms, Varsh is waiting for her. He notes that she is wearing a jacket that is not hers and accuses her of impersonating a commissioned officer. What an idiot. Please. Like, come on. Please. He's grasping at straws at this point. Literally. Get over it. Violet's bag is searched and it's clear. But the dagger Zayden gave her is in the jacket pocket. And if Varsh found it, then they would be royally screwed. Yeah. Rihanna peeks out but closes the door before they notice her. But her and Violet do make some eye contact before she closes the door. 
Yeah. Varsh wants the jacket searched, but Professor Kaori intervenes and asks, since when do we search cadets' backs? Kaori says that power must always be kept in check. And Kaori also thinks that Varsh abuses his power. So basically, yeah. Varsh is like, do you think I'm abusing my power here? And he's like, I think you always abuse your power, yeah. Varsh. He's like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Kaori gives his expert opinion that Violet should not be punished for what clearly was the choice of her dragon, her very powerful and worried mated dragon. Varsh is pissed and says that some of them do not bow to the whims of their dragons. They influence them instead. Yeah, I don't think hmm. that's how it goes, honey. Yeah. What kind of bitch dragon do you have that lets you push it around? Literally. <laughs> crazy orange ones. So this. Yeah. <laughs> Panchak is in agreement that Violet is not to be punished. So that is good. Varsh yeah. storms away and Kaori tells Violet that she is making powerful enemies. But Violet thinks that this one just came that way. She's like, I understand yeah. that I have a lot of enemies and I'm always going to have a lot of enemies just based on who my mother is and who I am now dating. But Varsh, he just came this way. I didn't do anything to him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which I feel like most of the fucking people that hate her, she didn't do anything to them. But That's very true. Yeah. She's <laughs> like, I'm not making anything. They just are. Yeah. Of course, Violet was searched, though, and her sheath is empty, and she's freaking out thinking Varus took it. But it was really Rhiannon who pulled the dagger through the wall, which is something that she has done for the very first time here. Yeah, She's never actually pulled anything through the wall before. Yes. Her friends yeah. are all in Rhiannon's room, so Riddick and Sawyer are also in there. And when Rhiannon questions her about the dagger, she tells her friends the truth. Finally! Violet tells them that the dagger is for killing Venon. Woo! Oh, crazy. They are in the know. They are <laughs> in the know. No more fighting with Rhi. So chapter 30 is basically like a conjumbled chapter of a lot of information to our friends about what's going on in the quadrant and just leading us into the last of chapters in this section. The epigraph for chapter 30 is, Barring invasion, only writers and designated scribes are permitted in the writer's quadrant. To enter uninvited as infantry or even as a healer is to welcome a swift death. Mm -hmm. And this is from Article 2, Section 3, the Biscayeth War College Code of Conduct. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Who's coming in the Ratters Quadrant? <laughs> Someone that is not invited. <laughs> yep. So Violet tells them almost everything that happens after Resin, including in Darna, the assassination attempts, the daggers, supplying friendly drifts, Jacinia sneaking her classified books about the wards, and even the theory that Navarre knows how to lure the venom. Yeah, literally Almost everything. Everything. She just spills out her guts. Yeah. Violet leaves <laughs> out about Arisha and her brother. It's not because she doesn't trust them, but it's just not a secret for hers to tell. Which, yeah. I mean, I don't think anything she just said is a secret for hers to tell. I guess. Well, I, I guess. guess it. Because it has to do about with the venom. The ven yeah. yeah. That's like leadership hiding stuff. But yeah, yeah, so she tells them everything except about Arisha and Redden. They also learn that the dragons know, but the Empyrean is still split. Some of them want to act and some don't. Without the Empyrean taking an official stance, none of the dragons are willing to put their riders in danger by telling them if they don't already know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the dragons are like, I don't know a thing. Yeah, it's so interesting how they do that. But I mean, they're protecting their riders. They're bonded to yeah. them and they don't obviously want anything bad to happen to them because they don't want to feel that grief or, you know, die themselves. Exactly, yeah. But people are dying beyond the wards, and the propaganda is real. Sawyer explains it's easy to keep this a secret because Markham is choosing which news gets published and which does not. His village on the coast only receives news from scribes, official announcements only. So yeah. basically they hear what they want them to hear and that's it. Yeah, they have such a system in place that they're easily controlling the Navarians. Yeah. They ended up burning all the wyvern to get rid of them and told the students in Battle Brief that their trading posts were charred for miles and that they had to find a new location for quarterly trades. They're just wiping their hands with it. They're just whatever they can to keep this lie contained. It's crazy. Yeah. They have so many, if this happens, we do this. If this happens, we do that in place yeah. that they never have to tell the Navarians what is going on. Crazy. Violet tells them they have a year, most likely less, until the venom and wyvern are 
are at their border. Violet mm-hmm. wants Rihanna to tell her family to leave her home because they are so close to the border. But Rihanna's like, what am I supposed to tell them? They have a thriving business going on. Yeah. Like, what am I even supposed to tell them about why they need to leave? So oh. at this time, I think – Rihanna is not going to say anything until she has to. Yeah. No, I agree. Much to Violet's relief, Rihanna and Riddick and Sawyer are not angry with her from hiding this all from them. Rihanna felt disappointed and frustrated that Violet didn't feel like she could come to her, but she can't imagine how heavy this has been for Violet to carry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Violet's like, no, but you should be angry. And like, yeah. she remembers her reaction to Zayden. And now she's like kind of second guessing like how hard yeah. she was on Zayden. But it's like, Ooh, I was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. When you're in an intimate relationship, even though yeah. these are your best friends, like when she was just trying to trust Zayden in the first place, just based on their previous yeah. relationship, that it would be more of a betraying moment than like this relationship she has with her friends that has always yeah. been trusting. That yeah, I feel like you're always a little bit more cloudy in your judgment when it's an emotional yeah More emotional attraction or relationship yeah so the yeah. gang has a moment where they all embrace and they say they don't run they all stick together and they make it to graduation no matter what oh i love our squad i love our squad <laughs> they're so cute <sighs> So Ree, Sawyer, and Riddick agreed to help Violet research the wards while Zayden and the other marked ones focus on smuggling weapons. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a book that's older than 400 years that hasn't been through a set of hands to translate or change. A primary source, sort of like personal journals that Riddick brilliantly brings up. He notices them on a ledger in General Sorengel's office when they were getting the map for squad games. I love this moment. I love Riddick in general, but he's like, so wait. smart. He's like, wait, do I know something that you guys don't? And Reese like, yeah. Riddick. <laughs> <laughs> Violet's like, come on, tell me, tell me. Yeah. So there's actually two of them, Lyra and Warwick's journals in a sublevel vault that even Violet didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. This means, though, that they are beyond classified and retrieving them could definitely get them killed. Yeah. That's all right. They're going to do it anyway. Yeah. Riddick's like, oh, great. I was just wondering when it was going to start getting dangerous around here. Like, you didn't just go through the assessment of freaking RSC. Literally. Oh, he must have not got it as bad as Violet. He got punched in the face like multiple times. <laughs> yeah. I know. Boys are just dumb. Yeah. They just forget about stuff like that. That's very true. Jacinia <laughs> knew nothing about the sublevel vault, so she will search while the rest of them are researching the first six and the wards. Yes. The researching goes by fast with four people looking, and Violet is thinking it is nice to be sitting with her friends again, but they don't find anything. Mm-hmm. Violet doesn't get to fill in Zayden because the next Saturday they have land nav again with first wing this time and Jack Barlow is being weirdly nice to everyone. Jack is even helping tutor a first year on the map, but we still don't trust him. No, we don't trust him. No. And Darna remains suspiciously asleep. Taryn tells us later in this chapter that she is sleeping longer than expected. So now he's getting a little worried. Yeah. He's like, uh oh. Yeah. Sawyer stumbles onto a 300 year old passage that confirms that more than one ward stone was created so violet was right now she's like how do we do it and you were right too because like obviously we know that there's a ward stone in arisha but you were thinking yeah. that there has to be more ward stones probably at all the different hatching grounds that yeah that we know about for sure the weekends following zayden was on duty and she couldn't even see mira the next weekend after that she is back at land nav again and violet receives the message taryn and sigail can see each other but they are definitely keeping violet and zayden apart mm-hmm. then varsh is making her choose between her squad receiving a zero on an assignment or flying to samara Taryn makes the choice for them and they stay, but he's miserable about it. So at first Ugh. they weren't punishing Taryn and Seagal, but now to punish yeah. Violet and Zayden, he doesn't get to see Seagal this week because of an assignment. I'm so fucking glad Varus dies at the end of this section. I'm so sick of him. <laughs> I know. So so literally so him. But this is what Mira was worried about is that she was going to yeah. have to choose between her schooling and Zayden. And I mean, it, it really isn't because of what Mira was worried about. It's just because of Varus is a douchebag. <laughs> Yeah, literally. It's threshing day. Woo! We love threshing. 
<laughs> Violet is very nervous for Sloane, and so is mm-hmm. Imogen, even though she won't admit it. Imogen has been short with Violet since Violet told her friends the truth, which forced Imogen to tell Quinn, but Quinn received yeah. the knowledge just like Rhiannon did. But Zayden doesn't know yet because they haven't seen each other, and he's not going to be very happy about this. No. <laughs> She's... <laughs> Having anxiety about telling him, but she's like almost secretly happy that she doesn't have to tell him yet. I feel yeah. it's like, well, I haven't seen him in weeks, so yeah. So we know from threshing that Vizia bonded a brown dagger tail, Ava Lynn, Lynx, and Baylor made it through, although we don't know what dragons they bonded. Mm-hmm. Arik bonded a blue club tail, and Sloane bonded a red dagger tail, just like her brother Liam. Yes, and Aww. I just wanted to know I cried reading. That. <laughs> I saw that note after and I started laughing. I'm like, of course she cried. (laughs) I had to put that there. Even though I would have remembered to say it, I just put that so I wouldn't forget. Because I've said, I've had so much in my mind. But yeah, no, I literally cried when I read that Sloan got just like her brother. I know, that's cute. Also, interesting that Arc got a blue dragon. I know. Who else has blue? Zayden. Zayden, that's yeah, it. Because blues have not been bonding. And so yeah. it's interesting that there was a blue willing to bond this threshing. And I wonder why like that wasn't made more of a big deal uh, yeah. and talked about. Obviously, we're so removed from the first years and what's going on with like the yeah. gauntlet thrashing and things like that, like we saw last year, because obviously we're in second year right. with Violet. But I think if a blue was willing to bond this year, that that would have been made a bigger deal since yeah. blues haven't you know, bonded in forever. Like Zayden was even lucky to get Segale. Um, yeah, it's almost like the blues can sense powerful riders or something because hmm. Segale bonded Zayden. And I feel like Arik being the son of the king is actually going to be a really powerful rider in the end. Yeah, so it's interesting that he also has a blue. Yeah. So Violet asked Taryn why he keeps saying he has the Empyrean gathered. And he says if they were, he couldn't tell her why. Mm. I'm like, hmm, yeah, because he could she could see them all up there like watching and he's with the elders. And so she wonders like what's going on. It's like, well, if I knew what was going on, which I do, I can't tell you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jacinia sends Rhi a missive requesting to meet her by the archives. Yeah. She has a tome they've requested. Yeah, so Riddick will go and meet her since Violet has watch duty and Rhi has squad leader duties. Yes. Violet then goes to the academic wing for her watch, relieving a girl named Aya from the turret. And she was like, oh, I didn't know you were relieving me. And Violet's like, I didn't know you were up here. So, that <laughs> is interesting. Yeah. All of a sudden, these four grown soldiers in infantry, Blue, ambush Aya and Violet. They were paid to deliver a specific message. And Violet's like, let me guess. Secrets die with the people who keep them? Not original. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, let me just get ambushed by four guys and make a joke. But okay. (laughs) Yeah. The two of them are able to kill off three of the assassins, but not before Aya is slain. And the last of the assassins attempts to throw Violet over the edge of the tower. He literally just like lets go after he gets her over the edge. Violet is able to grab onto a lip to hold on to, but there's no foothold. The soldier tells her to just let go, but then someone shoves a knife into his spine. Whoa. That's a chapter Who is a knight in shining armor? Uh, well, chapter 31 <laughs> is full of surprises. Yes. <laughs> so here we go. The epigraph for chapter 31 is, Everyone thinks most writers' cadets die from dragon fire. Truth be told, it's usually gravity that gets us. Mm-hmm. Page 47 of the Book of Brennan. Ooh. So true. They'd be falling off their dragons. Yeah. So <laughs> the soldier is thrown forward over her head and into the darkness. And to Violet's surprise, Jack Barlow has taken out her attacker. He then what pulls the her up to safety. Wild. Yeah. Jack tells Violet, you don't know who you really are until you face down Malik. Yeah, so he's like... What do we think, Megan? I don't know. I really 
don't trust him still, but this is interesting. He said that he had duty in the dormitory tower and he heard her yell and he says that no one is going to be dying from infantry. So um, yeah. he didn't know who it was until he got over there. And I mean, he could have just let her go. He's like, I can put you back and you climb back up if you want. She's like, no, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take your niceness for now. Yeah. <laughs> and then he leaves. So Aya's does die during this mm-hmm. interaction with these infantry soldiers, and her death marks half of them from Russ and dead, mm-hmm. which is nuts. Yeah. Atos is not going to stop until he picks them all off one by one. Yeah. Riddick arrives <laughs> right after that and is like, oh my God, what the hell happened here? And then Riddick <laughs> delivers some good news to Violet. Yes, Jacinia knows where the vault is, but there are wards and she knows how to get through them, but they need someone in King Tori's bloodline. They are in a royal sub-level vault, of course. Of course, but Violet says, well, it's a good thing we have access to a prince who happens to hate his father. Yes, thank you, Arik. Woo-hoo. Yeah, we knew you came to the writer's quadrant for a reason. <laughs> You shall serve your purpose now in our story. Yes. Chapter 32, Zayden is back and finally seeing Violet for the first time in weeks. And he is not too happy with her about what has been going on and what she plans to do this evening. But I guess he's happy that she has just informed him that their communication is working. Yeah. Let's see what happens. (laughs) The epigraph for chapter 32 is, God save us from the ambitions of second years. They think they've experienced everything because they survived their first year. But in reality, they've only known enough to get themselves killed. And this is from Major Offender's Guide to the Rider's Quadrant, the unauthorized edition. That's true. Ooh, it is true. (laughs) So Zayden is staring Violet down into her soul. But there are no shadows that are coming out from under her bed. So she takes this as a good sign. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Violet says Rhiannon saved her ass by pulling the dagger through the wall and she knew something was up so she had to tell them Yeah, Violet could feel Zayden counting to 10 but maybe it was more like 20 and Zayden says <laughs> that he is choosing his words wisely smart man it's a smart man <laughs> Violet says that Rhiannon Sawyer Riddick and Quinn know but Quinn is on Imogen not Violet she's like I'm not responsible for that one <laughs> <laughs> so Violet tells Zayden that they don't know about Arisha or Brennan or the luminary issue, which to Violet isn't really an issue. She's like, I can fly there in two days. And Zayden's like, no, stop. <laughs> Literally, like not right now. I'm still yeah. counting in my head to calm down. Yeah. He's ready to like grab her by the throat. <laughs> yeah. They have a plan to break into the archives tonight. But of course, Zayden reminds Violet of the risks. Jacinia won't be the only scribe there. So there's a high probability of being caught. And the books not only have to be stolen, but also returned before anyone notices. They have to get out in less than an hour or they're dead. The archives aren't kind to visitors after hours, but it's worth it. The journals are their best shot at learning how the first six built the wards. So yeah, this is what they need. Yeah, we went over this way in the beginning of Fourth Wing, I think, but... The archives basically shut down all oxygen levels <laughs> so that no fire can happen beyond the open hours. So whenever it's closed, there's literally some kind of magical effect that basically you will not survive if you're in the archives. So they have an hour exactly yeah. to get in and out. Violet says they will be dead anyways if they can't get the wards up in Arisha. So this is worth the risk. Zayden yeah. said he would never argue with her about books. He only picks fights that he knows he can win. Another smart, smart man. Smart again. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another smart man comment. Zayden is very close to her now, but he doesn't kiss her. He is going to let what happened at Samara be an exception, but it wasn't. Violet kisses him. She is choosing him and choosing them as a couple. Oh, I know, but they have to Yay. stop because they have things to do. I know. Ugh. So the whole squad invites Arik to a meeting in Violet's warded room to ask for his help going to the royal sublevel vault. Zayden and Arik have a very frosty interaction and both look at each other with malice. Zayden's father started a war that Arik's father ended. Mm-hmm. But they warn him if they tell him and he declines, he's dead. Like he is not leaving there alive if he 
here is everything. Yes, Violet is the one that's supposed to deliver the news, but she's struggling a little bit. So of course, Zayden fills in the blanks. Yeah. <laughs> Ark says that he won't lift a finger for Zayden because, well, Zayden killed Ark's brother and Zayden's not sorry about it. So nope. <laughs> Violet's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Drama, of course. Nothing can just be easy. No. Three hours later, everyone knows the plan and they are on their way to the archives. He eventually agrees to help Ark. <clears throat> yes. An hour from now, they will either have the journals or be dead. Eight of them are covered in scribe robes embroidered with second year golden triangles. The guard is asleep at his post and Bodhi and Riddick slip behind the door to keep watch. But Jacinia stops them and says only four should continue or it'll look suspicious. So Zayden chooses himself. Arik, Violet, and Imogen to continue. Ree, Sawyer, and Quinn will stay close in case they are needed. But if something goes wrong, they are instructed to go back to their rooms and act like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. No need to get in trouble if you don't need to. Exactly. Jacinia leads them to a classroom and they go up to a bookshelf where she finds and pulls a lever to reveal a steep spiral staircase. Zayden is looking at Violet with what might have been and then he tells Violet that she looks better in black. Ooh. Mm. So now they're down to 45 minutes, but Jacinia tells them if they are running low on time, they can stay down there in the vault. The wards don't work the same, so they won't die, but they'll be stuck until morning. So not the best idea either. I know. Sounds like it would still be a death sentence. Yeah. <laughs> In chapter 33, there's lots of searching and then lots of running for their lives. <laughs> yes. The epigraph for chapter 33 is, The first time you are caught in the archives after the door seals for the evening will be the last. The complex magics put in place to preserve our text are not compatible with life. And this is from Colonel Daxton's Guide to Excelling in the Scribe Quadrant. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Yes. Whatever this magic is, it will kill you. Literally. Our squad is in the sub-level vault, and Zayden uses his shadows to take out two guards at the end of the first hallway. Mm -hmm. The wards are super strong. They can feel them, and they are uncomfortable as shit, according to Imogen. <laughs> <laughs> Only Arik thinks they are not that bad, which yeah. I'm sure it's because he has the royal blood. So. Right. Arik pulls Violet into the vault with her and powerful magic ripples through her. The rush of a hundred foot free fall is the feeling she has when she's pulled through. She's queasy, but she'll live. Arik can't look through the hundreds of tomes in there alone. He took a chance that she wouldn't smack into the wards since she really is the only one who knows what they're looking for. So mm -hmm. Zayden pissed, but yeah whatever what are you gonna do Ark refuses to pull zayden through the ward saying the only perk he's getting out of this expedition right now is knowing zayden cannot get to violet which i feel like is <laughs> untrue he's also stealing from his dad which he hates him so it's not the only perk. yeah it's not the only perk yeah probably better than stealing from his dad though <laughs> yeah zayden is now feeling even more murderous of course, he's like, when I get my hands on you, you little shit. Yeah. There's a lot of good info in this vault. Violet finds two books titled The Study of the Winged Creatures that looks half a century old and A History of Island Wars, which looks even older. There are journals from every commanding general of the army since unification. There are also tomes on the early wars, the history of individual provinces, mythology of gods, and even early tomes on mining practices. Lots of good info in this royal vault. Lots of good info. Violet gives us some history facts, of course. Of course. They used to be generals of the riders, healers, infantry, and scribes separately. They were separate positions and any of the departments could be general of the armies until about 200 years ago with the Kravlin uprising. Hmm. Interesting. We learned that Halden does in fact know what is going on with the venom and the secrets that leadership is keeping. And Ark mm -hmm. doesn't elaborate, just saying that he is here and well, Halden isn't. Ark isn't surprised Violet kept their secret saying that he's known her longer and Violet informs Arik that he cannot trust Dane. So basically Imogen's like, I can't believe you kept Arik's secret of who he really is. And yeah. she's like, well, I kept your secret. And Arik isn't surprised that one, he kept his secret and that two, that she kept their secret just knowing who Violet is. Exactly. And Arik figured that he couldn't trust Dane already because of what happened on the map between violet and dane i love that he just automatically trusts violet he's like fuck dane <laughs> yeah yeah because he's known dane just as long as he's known know. violet but i think yeah seeing the interactions between violet and dane and knowing that violet is being frosty to someone he's like all right something's up and i need something's to stay away up. from dane yeah exactly violet wouldn't do this for just no reason no 
So they have about 15 minutes left and Violet is like, of course, this is how this is going. (laughs) Story of my life. The propaganda should have opened up the other cadet's eyes. Mira should have believed her and Darna should be awake by now. So she is just spiraling. And Zayden's like, she's feeling hopeless. Breathe. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Poor thing. It can't get to her to help her. So I know. needs to like calm her down through their mind talk and Mm -hmm. figure it out. Yeah. I also thought this was very interesting. Violet finds what she calls a promising crack spine tome, but it's actually a weather almanac. And weather was in italics. So I was just like, Hmm, weather as in signet related weather? Maybe. Why would else would a weather almanac be there? That is true. You're Unless right. Unless it's just hiding whatever's inside and I don't know, but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. Imogen says something to Arik about hating the marked ones and Arik says that he doesn't hate the marked ones. They led a righteous rebellion. He just hates Zayden because he killed his brother. And Imogen's like, oh, well, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I can't blame you for what your parents did, but Zayden killed my brother, so fuck him. Yeah, I think it's like because he's talked to Imogen about, you know, Violet being trustworthy. And Zayden's like, I thought we weren't doing the talking thing. He's like, I wasn't talking to you. So yeah. then Imogen's like, oh, so you don't hate all marked ones. They yeah. So Violet finally finds what they are looking for. She knows the king would want to show off the journals, but also hide them from the light since light can crack the leather spines. Mm -hmm. It's not just temperature and touch that they need to monitor. And Arik also knows his father would keep the journals within reach. Yes. Arik also knows that they are trying to ward a rebel outpost because he knows that they will be fighting a war on two fronts. So he's not dumb. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell him everything, but he knows what they're doing. Yeah, he knows. So she pulls the velvet tablecloth and voila! Voila! Two two hand signs, leather tomes, but behind another set of wards. Mm -hmm. Arik reaches through the wards and every inch of his skin that passes through the wards is blistered. He thinks the wards knew he was not his father. So he gets a little boo-boo there. Yeah, just because he could get through the wards to get into the vault doesn't mean he can touch everything. Exactly. The group is now sprinting back and they make it to the classroom and shut the secret door and they continue their escape. The door is closing on its own and Sora and all them are like, hurry up, get over here. Yeah. And Violet is out and then Imogen, but then the door is closing and she fears that Zayden and Ark are not going to make it. Ah, anxiety on the first read. <laughs> you immediately have to read chapter 34. Just be grateful I didn't end our section here with that. (laughs) Right? I know. Something I would do. (laughs) It is. So chapter 34 is our finding out what happened to Zayden and Arik, what the group's plan is, and then something bad happens to Violet at the end of this Uh chapter. Let's get to it then. (sighs) Sad. The epigraph for chapter 34 is, My last words with my father before the Battle of Arisha were spoken in anger because he was sending me away for my own safety. I'm not sure I'll ever forgive myself for that, but I like to think he forgives me. This is from the recovered correspondence of Lieutenant Zayden Ryerson to Cadet Violet Sorengale. Oh, so sad. He definitely forgives you, Zayden. He, he totally forgives you, Zayden. <laughs> Zayden pulls Ark through just as the door slams shut. So they made it. <laughs> Thank God. Zayden says they must keep to the plan and they all take off their scribe robes. But because of Ark's burns, they decide that Riddick will take Ark to his room and keep his hands hidden. Ree will sneak in a healer named Dry to help. He apparently owes Violet a favor and will keep mm-hmm. quiet. If his wounds are tended to, they should heal overnight. Perfect. Quinn, we find out, also has the coolest job on this journal heist, she did. in my opinion, I think. Yeah. She projected into the commons and made it clear she was looking for lemonade because they were drinking in Imogen's room. And then she projects as Violet and Rhiannon and takes a walk. Wild. <laughs> so like, wild. She actually is able to distort her own features a little, but it's way easier in the astral plane, hence why she can project as other people. Mm-hmm. Her signet is stronger because her dragon, 
Kruth, was her great aunt's dragon, but not a direct descendant. So she doesn't have to worry about going mad like those who bond in the direct familiar line. Which is interesting that Violet hears this and doesn't think anything of it yeah, right now. Yeah, doesn't she knows say anything. That, she knows that Zayden's dragon also bonded the grandfather, but she doesn't think to say like, oh. Yeah, no, for a smart girl, it's weird that she doesn't question this. Yeah, or pick up on that. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Imogen and Quinn take the stairs to their rooms and Bodie and Sawyer head to the commons to make a scene so they can be remembered. And Zayden and Violet climb to the first floor to escape into the courtyard and they even share a smooch. Yes, they do. Violet finally gets to open one of the journals and flips to the center of Warwick's. It's in Old Lucerish, which of course she can read. So she reads a couple of lines that said, After we place the last rune, we place the wardstone where the dragons felt the deepest currents of magic run. Then said, the last step complete. The protections fell into place at the birth of an iron rain. She thinks she might be off by a word or two, but it's there on the pages. She decides to give one journal to Zayden to bring to Brennan. He can translate it and spitting it up means they can read it faster. Mm -hmm. At least one of them will make it out of Biscayeth and he can leave now so he won't be searched. Yes. They will see each other in seven days and Violet rubs her chest for the ache she feels watching him walk away. This is the first time in months that she's felt hope instead of dread. Me too. I'm like, yay. But I'm like, don't (laughs) feel that way, Violet, because bad things are about to happen. Right? For sure. Foreshadowing. Literally foreshadowing for like the next page. Mm-hmm. Violet watches Zayden fly away and she bumps into Nolan, who offers her a mug with lemonade in it. He's like, Oh, I remember that this is your favorite and you are on my list of mending. Which, again, Violet is such a smart girl. She never put her name on the list because they said it was going to take too long. Yeah, that's true. I just feel like she trusts Nolan so much because he mended her her whole entire life. Life that she just doesn't think he would ever hurt her. Yeah, I know. Well, Violet drinks from it without realizing Nolan has put something in her drink. Nolan says he never likes to see her hurt, but he can't protect her from the consequences of her own actions when she risks the safety of every civilian in the kingdom. Oh, and, and then Varish is there and he's like, what have you gotten yourself into? Because Violet has a scribe bag on her shoulder, not a rider's. Oh, a flaw wild. in their plan. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, want to point out Jack is the one that pointed Violet out that she was standing outside in the courtyard. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think he knows what was going on there. I feel like Nolan probably was just like, has anyone seen Violet? And Jack was yeah. like, oh, she's standing right there. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows? Who knows? So chapter 35 is a terrible chapter. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's, I mean, a very useful, much needed chapter, I think, to keep this story moving. But it is horrible for our girl, Violet. Horrible, horrible, horrible. So the epigraph for chapter 35 is, The only signet more terrifying than an intrinsic is a truthsayer. And yet we let them live. This is from Major Offender's Guide to the Rider's Quadrant, the unauthorized edition. Violet notices her jailer wears infantry blue, which means she is in the brig. This is not a drill or RSC. She's really in trouble here. Yes. The group is talking presumably about Violet's mother finding out that they have Violet and no one is notifying her. Apparently, Mm -hmm. the general is in Caldir and she won't be back for a week. This is their chance to get her. Yeah. And I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> Violet is upset with Nolan, saying that she's always trusted him. And Nolan wants to know why she stole Lyra's journal, and then they can return to trusting each other. Markham sounded an alarm that the royal wards within the king's private library had been breached. And then Nolan saw her standing in the courtyard with a scribe satchel. So things were just like, oh. lining up. He's like, God yeah. damn it, Violet. Vara says that she can answer his questions and then sleep off this headache before class tomorrow, or she can lie and things will get messy which i feel like is a full-blown lie nora should have been like lie of course <laughs> lie yeah, no shit. <laughs> how come she don't call him out on his bullshit literally they found the journal and they want to know how she did it who she did it with and why yes she ain't going nowhere until they find out mm-hmm. violet also realizes that this means that no one else is chained up or caught so she will 
endure the pain to save everybody else that was involved. Yes. And Nora is there and her signet is detecting lies. So the first question about how Violet got into the royal vault was the truth. Violet couldn't get in there because she doesn't have royal blood. Yeah. So she eventually finds out that they can't get into the royal wards. No one wants to tell the king that they fucked up and someone broke in. Mm -hmm. And Markham says that the coverlet was not disturbed. So they can't even confirm it's missing or if it's a copy. Mm -hmm. Varsh asks Violet if it is a copy. And she says she wouldn't know because she hasn't had time to examine it yet, which is another truth. Yeah, she's very clever and only saying truthful answers. Yes. Violet says she's done answering their questions and that they can call a quorum of wing leaders and do so in accordance to the codex. So she's like, put me on trial. I am done answering questions. Varsh yeah. backhands her and tells Nora to call an immediate formation and check the hands of every cadet in the quadrant. Despite her situation, Violet is reassured because Zayden has Warwick's journal, which means that they already have what they need to raise Orisha's wards. Still, this doesn't stop Varj from torturing Violet as he first dislocates and then breaks one of her fingers. Ugh. This is just the Ugh. beginning. Awful. Some time passes as she is in the brig and Violet begins to hallucinate Liam whose oh. mirage is a comforting presence for her. Liam says that maybe Malik sent him as a kindness and Violet reminds Liam that Malik doesn't do kindness or let souls wander and Liam says he's not wandering and he's exactly where he needs to be oh but I like liam it just seems so real is I this know. really a hallucination or is liam there i believe it is a, a hallucination just mm -hmm. because of the fact that she kind of talks herself out of it being real by saying like her brain is smarter than the average you know like she knows it's a hallucination yeah but i think if just the perfect way to get Liam back in our story. Like, yeah. literally the perfect way. Yeah, I guess. Oh. I just wanted to be real because he I know that he's not wandering and he's exactly oh. where he needs to be. I know. He's so cute. I even needed Liam for this chapter. Me too. <laughs> I was like, no, the torture, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So none of the cadets had hand injuries, and Violet Squad and teachers, Emeretto and Devera, are wondering where the fuck she is. Mm -hmm. It's Monday, and she missed class. She is also still cut off from Zayden and her dragons because they keep forcing more elixir down her throat between bone breaking. Yes. Her arm and ankle are broken along with many bruises on her beaten body. And Liam tells her that Taryn would have already alerted Sigale with his panic. And even if Taryn can't reach her down here, Zayden will rip this place apart to get to her. Violet just has to survive. <sighs> Liam, you're he's, so right. He's keeping her sane. Yeah. Farish has more questions for her. He knows she didn't return to Biscayev after the whole incident with Atos sending them to Athbine. He wants to know where she went and what she's trying to ward. Mm. We learn Varsh's signet also mm -hmm. here. He can see people's weaknesses. Yes. But he couldn't see Violet's weaknesses. Her shields are too strong to let him in. But as soon as they cut her off from her power, he could see it all. Her mm -hmm. weaknesses are the people she loves. Her squad, her sister, her dragons, and Zayden. Yeah. I'm glad the thought of Brennan didn't pop into her head as like a weakness. It was just her sister. <gasps> That's true. I mean, she hasn't seen Brennan in a long time. So unless it was about like siblings and then he was just like, oh, well, it must yeah. just be Mira. Yeah, yeah. maybe. So Varish is toying with Violet. He isn't just questioning her. Yeah, he knows that she is hoping Zayden will break the rules and come to save her. Her own mother hasn't even lifted a finger for her, which obviously he doesn't know that Violet heard them talking about how her mother was away for a week. So yeah. you're like, yeah, your mother is here and, you know, she hasn't even lifted a finger for you, which is not the truth. Yeah, she knows they're full of shit. Yeah. But she also knows that Varish is setting a trap for Zayden, who he claims he is the one he really wants so. yes Varsh tells Violet if she tells him what he needs to know then she can save Zayden Varsh says Zayden fumbled his shields once and saw what it would take for him to shatter and that is Violet Violet tells Varsh well while you're hunting Zayden Taryn is hunting Solas 
Violet might die in this chamber, but she promises that Varish will. Varish says that it won't stop him from torturing her in the meantime and calls in Nolan to mentor. Violet worries that Zedan won't come for her and that he will choose the revolution instead of her. And Violet tells Liam not to leave her and he promises that he won't. Oh, I know. he's going to be with her through it all. I know. They once again force the serum down her throat at least once a day. And she's been down there for five days now. <sighs> she has to eat the food, though, that they provide because survival is what matters most. Yes. And Liam never leaves her side through all of the beatings. Currently, her ribs are cracked and her left arm is snapped in the same place where Varsh broke it the first time. So basically, this means she's not up to full strength and Nolan is not at full strength. Yeah. Nora contemplates bringing Jack Barlow in, but Varsh says that they can't trust him with anything. Ooh, even he doesn't trust Jack Barlow. No. So they are finally bringing in the big guns. They're bringing in Dane to question Violet. And Varish tells Dane that the rider in question is suspected to be working with the Second Rebellion with the intent on destroying Navarre. He says the safety of all Navarians is at stake. Please, Dane, give me the prisoner's memories. <laughs> like, fuck off. Yeah. And obviously Dane sees who the prisoner is and he says, with Ryerson, she wants to bring down the wards. Liar. Liar. Dane and Violet argue as she tries to plead with him that Varish is twisting the truth. But without her shields, there is no way she can stop Dane from seeing her memories. Varish shows Dane the alloy hilted dagger Zayden gave her and said the metal in this dagger also powers the wards. He thinks they've been smuggling them out and weakening their wards little by little. He tells Dane to search her mind for the word ward specifically. Now Nora is telling Varish General Sorengale has called for leadership for disturbances at the border. We learn Zayden deserted days ago from reports that they received this morning and they are currently collecting the marked ones. Mm -hmm. Liam reminds Violet though that logic says he would have to go through all of her current thoughts to find what he wants. She thinks of Liam dying in the battle at Resin with the Venon and Wyvern and throws herself and Dane into the memory instead. She's like like, fuck you, you're not going to find out what I know about the wards, but here, look at what you did, bitch. Violet accuses Dane of killing Liam and tells him that she hates him. And Dane says he only searched her memories to prove his father wrong, but all they did was prove him right. If the marked ones died betraying their kingdom, then they deserved what they got. Which, oh, so frustrating in that moment. I know. Violet shows Dane how they were sent to Arisha to die and about the venom. She shows Dane that Varish and the others have erased their history to avoid conflict and keep them safe while innocents die. She shoves her memories of Liam at him along with the torture Varish has been inflicting upon her these past few days. Dane requests the dagger to observe what they've been stealing and arming the enemy with. So Violet's like, fuck, of all things that I showed you, this is it. I'm done. Now they're going to call everyone in because now Varish knows that this is what we've been doing. Yeah. And he puts the dagger to Violet's throat and tells her that she should have trusted him and none of this would have happened. Now Violet is in full regrets about never telling Zayden she loved him. Literally, I don't Aww. feel bad about that. I really don't I because they know what kind of perilous situations they're in every day. And she's known that she's loved Zayden this whole time and just was being so stubborn about not saying it. So in that, yeah. I didn't feel bad about that part. I feel bad that like she's being beaten. But when it comes to telling Zayden that she loves him and being in regrets about it, I did not feel bad. Yeah. Which Honestly, I at least it will be over after this horrific experience. Yes. <laughs> and her realization. Yes. <laughs> but instead of killing Violet, Dane plunges the knife into Varish and frees Violet from her constraints. I was, like, I was like, oh, yes, thank God. When would we ever be like this grateful for Dane? Which I feel like we kind of have in small increments in this book because he refused yeah. to get her memories when she was injured during the assessment of RSC. And he is literally telling her, you should have trusted me. None of this would have happened. I would have been on your side is basically what Dane is telling Violet in this moment before he plunges the knife into Varish. 
Yeah, but also that's bullshit because he's such a rule follower and all that dumbass shit that he wouldn't even have her back over before. So I get why Violet didn't tell him. Well, I think like, yeah, of course, I totally understand why she didn't tell Dane. But I think Dane is a very different Dane after Violet got back from Resin and Aphrodite. Yeah. So it's not the same Dane that we were dealing with last year. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. But that's also the first interaction she's had with him since he got into the writer's quadrant to begin with. So I feel like, I don't know, this year she hasn't really even dealt with him because she's been so mad. So he might be a different Dane, but she's not thinking he's a different Dane. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he's tried to tell her multiple times, but obviously she's like... Yeah, she's not hearing it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Dane tells Violet that they have to move or they're dead. Dane holds his sword to Nora's throat, telling her to let them pass or he will kill her. But Zayden arrives and says he makes no promises and slashes the dagger across Nora's throat. Wild. What a crazy ass chapter. Crazy chapter. Violet being tortured, Liam being there, Dane saving her, and now Zayden like slitting people's throats. (laughs) Yeah, crazy. So... Our last chapter of this section, chapter 36, is also another wild chapter. We learn yeah. lots of information. Mommy Sorengale makes an appearance. And wild. the cadets of Piscayet have a big decision to make. Yes. So the epigraph for chapter 36 is, The only crime worse than murdering a cadet is the unfathomable act of attacking leadership. And this is from Major Offender's Guide to the Rider's Quadrant, the unauthorized edition. Who is killing leadership today? Everybody. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Zayden is full of rage and wants to hurt Dane as well, but Violet defends Dane. Violet falls into Zayden's arms and he tells her there's nowhere in existence that he wouldn't find her. Violet says tears soak Zayden's chest and she isn't sure if the tears are his or hers. Oh, (laughs) it must be so hard. To, to see, see her, her like, like that, that too. I yeah. know crazy Garrick arrives pissed that Zayden didn't save anybody for him to kill he had <laughs> to clear a trail of bodies to get in here and he tells Violet that she's looked better but he's glad she's alive thanks Garrick you know who Garrick reminds me of who Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable he reminds me of Ron Stoppable <laughs> really <laughs> yes he's just goofy and like helpful sometimes but most of the time he's just there <laughs> I see Garrick as obviously he's like super strong and built and such a good fighter. And I see him as Emmett from Twilight, the goofy brother, but he's Mm. like strong and built. I don't know. (laughs) That's who he reminds me of. Very different people. (laughs) Yeah, very. (laughs) Garrick informs Zayden that it's chaos at Beskyeth and leadership is launching all over the place to get to the border. So Zayden's like, it worked, but What did they do? Well, we will find out. Varsh tells Dane his father will be disappointed in him. And Dane says if his father knows what Violet showed him, then Dane is the one who is disappointed in his father. Dane Mm -hmm. goes to kill Varsh, but Zayden stops him and says the honor belongs to Violet if she wants it, which she does. (laughs) Zayden helps Violet walk to Varsh and tells him, I promised you die in this room. But Zayden has to help her push the blade in as she was too weak. Teamwork mm-hmm. makes the dream work. Yeah. Now, Bye, Varsh. Yeah. But now I she, won't miss you. I won't miss you. <laughs> now she's freaking out though she just killed the vice commandant is she supposed to just go back to class now no no, Violet you're not going back to class no Zayden decides they are definitely leaving this guy yeah so Violet reassures Zayden that she didn't break and Zayden's like I trust you but we're getting out of here and Violet reminds Zayden that they will lose access to Biscay's weapons but he doesn't care about losing the rebellion or his homeland as long as she is alive Zayden is in love with her and she finally says it back to him. Yay! He says it here too, doesn't he, for the first time? Yeah, so this is the first time I think she's like believed him. Yeah. 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 But I don't think he actually said I love you until now. I'm pretty sure it's the first time. I don't know. Maybe. (laughs) I don't I think he says that he loves her when she's passing out in fourth wing. Or or maybe he doesn't say I love you, but he says something like, You can't make me love you. Yeah. But then I think he does say it at the end of fourth wing, I love you, but you're not gonna believe it or whatever. But she's not like paying attention, but 
I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe this is the first time he actually says, I love you. Not, I thought it was. I thought that's you. what the whole thing was. Like, she was like, well, why do I have to say that if you've never said it to me? He's never given me those words. But I'm pretty sure he has. Like, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. We're going to have to make a bet. And let you guys know who's right. <laughs> Amanda's probably right. I'm just so annoyed with their relationship at this point. I know. That I'm just like, all right, enough. <laughs> We've known they love each other for very long. Yes. <laughs> he also orders someone to tell Bodhi to track down the antidote for Violet and the rest of her squad. They were put under guard in the interrogation classroom after they tried to mount a rescue mission. Yeah, so they, they were did. like, what the fuck's going on? Let's go get her. I love them. I know. Zayden splints Violet's arms and wraps her ribs and he carries her out of the room. So Dane offers to carry her, but he's like, absolutely not. And Violet thanks Zayden, but she also thanks Liam, who is now disappearing into the shadows. And he's like, so happy Violet is still alive. And she says, thank you to both of them. Bye, Liam. We love you. Bye, Liam. We love you so much. I don't want Violet to get beaten anymore, but I also want more Liam, so. Yeah, <laughs> literally. So Zayden tells Dean that he can follow Zayden and Violet or die. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Garrick alerts them that they have a problem, and Zayden's like, what kind of problem? And Garrick calmly responds, a general-sized one, as Violet's mommy has a dagger to Garrick's throat. <laughs> <laughs> Garrick. Ron unstoppable. See, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just so funny he's like um a general size problem (laughs) yeah (laughs) when violet's eyes meet her mom she says that there's worry in them and she's shook interesting so zayden tells general sorengale that he killed everyone (laughs) she nods and then drops her blade Mm -hmm. that was unexpected that was she also has a clear liquid for violet which is the antidote. Mm-hmm. General Sorengale then says to Zayden that he of all people should know the lengths that she is willing to go to to protect her daughter. Zayden is the reason that they are getting reports of dragons dropping wyvern carcasses <laughs> at every outpost along the border. <laughs> Leadership is in a rush to contain the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so Damn. smart. So take smart. my girl and I will fuck shit up. Yes. General Sorengale says that at least Zayden can do is give her the chance to say goodbye to Violet. They all agree that Mommy Sorengale has three minutes to say goodbye. So Zayden's like, no. And she's like, three minutes. And Violet's like, okay, three minutes. And Zayden whips his head towards Violet and is like, she's a monster. And Violet's like, she's yeah. my mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like she has to hear laws. Her, Yeah, she has to hear her out. Yeah. So Dane also decides to follow Zayden. So Zayden's like, Did you make up your mind yet? Are you following? And Dane's like, I guess. And he's like, Well then fucking follow. Yeah. <laughs> The general says that when Violet is a mother, then she can talk about what Violet would lie and sacrifice in order to keep her children safe. So is this foreshadowing that Violet's going to be a mom? Maybe. Maybe. Because she's like, I did everything that I needed to do, including keeping the lie about the venom and wyvern to keep my children safe. So yeah, Violet doesn't think that that's an excuse, but she's like, you're not a mother. You don't know. Yeah. So General Sorengale knew Violet would never see the war with the Venon and poor Emil the way that they do with mm-hmm. their self-preservation stance. Markham saw Violet as his prodigy. He thought she would be easy to control and clever enough to continue the blindfold chosen for them hundreds of years ago. Yes. Yeah, so but no, no, not the case. Markham thought Violet would be easy to control, but mommy knew better than that. General Sorengale says that she may seem like a stranger to Violet, but she knows her daughter. She lost one child already defending the borders and she would not lose another one too. Yeah. General Sorengale forced Violet into the rider's quadrant so that she could live because they would have killed her for her reaction if she found out later in the scribe's quadrant. Yes. General Sorengale does not think less of scribe. She says, the love of her life was a scribe. She doesn't think less of them. That's not why Violet isn't no. a scribe, that she had to be a writer. She made Violet be a writer to save her life. I wonder if that was almost what happened to her dad, which is why she's saying that. Like he found mm. out and had an mo- emotional reaction and then they killed him. Yeah, maybe. Because we really, we really yeah, we don't, don't know. know. Or that he's dead because of his sad heart for Brennan dying or whatever. Yeah, because he but. had like a heart attack. But I'm sure yeah. Lilith Sorengale thinks that there's 
some suspicious things behind the death. So that's probably when she made the decision that Violet was no longer going to be a scribe, that she was going into the Rider Squadron. Even though she had no idea that (laughs) by putting Violet into the Rider Squadron that it would make all of this happen a lot quicker than it would have probably if she was in the Scribe Quadrant. Yeah. It's interesting, though, that if this was the way her dad died, then why did she wait until six months before she was going into Biscaya to to tell her? her? Yeah. Maybe, like, the talks about, you know, Violet from Markham weren't as pronounced until six months before her going in. True. Yeah, true. That's true. That makes sense. So General Sorengale called in a favor Zayden owed her for letting the Mark ones into the Biscaya. She gave the Mark Ones a chance, and Zayden took responsibility for all of them and Violet. If she survived Parapet on her own, all he had to do was help her survive outside of the challenges or her own first year shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> General Soren Girl confirms that she didn't know what Colonel Atos did with Athbine until mm-hmm. later. Obviously, he's like, I couldn't have stopped that because I didn't know until after. Like, that is the truth. But yeah, she- which is kind of the same thing happening here. Like, she can't start Varish because she didn't find out until after. Yeah. So but- she clearly doesn't learn from her mistakes, but. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But she yeah. never foresaw the mated dragon thing or the emotional entanglement between Zayden and Violet, which she calls disappointing. <sighs> You're a disappointment, General Soringale, so fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Never good enough for her daughter. Yeah. So General Soringale admits to the marks on Zayden's back as her doing, and she starts to say it's a tyrish custom, which pisses me off because i'm like so we're all unified and we get to forget all of the lost culture but of course this you keep yeah right? yeah but violet is like oh hell no shut the fuck up there is no excuse for this unforgivable act she's like Shh, stop talking i don't want to hear it yeah that was unnecessary yeah so general sorengel is happy to know that they are out but tells them not to tell her where they're going she tells them markham is still in caldea with the king do with that information as you please. Yes. General Sorengale asks if Dane has made his choice, and he has. And her only response is, hmm, which I thought was interesting. I don't yeah. know what that means. <laughs> General Sorengale says, so the father's word now becomes the son's. She now knows that Zayden has been arming the enemy who is trying to rip us apart. Which mm-hmm. is interesting that she's still calling it that, even though she knows. Well, I guess I from know. a self-preservation stance, it is like yeah. they're trying to ruin their self-preservation. So That's true. Z- yeah. Zayden wants to know if General Sorengale regrets letting him into the Rider Squadron, which would make sense after she learns all of this. But she says no. And to stay alive or all of this will have been for nothing. It's wow. it's interesting that she obviously believes in this self-preservation stance. But she's just letting them walk out with Violet. Yeah. It's it's just crazy. Obviously, she just wants her daughter alive at all costs. Yeah, I think she thinks she's safer with him than anybody else and the marked ones at this point. Yeah. So General Sorengale does not know about Brennan, but she thinks Violet is all that is left of her father. So not even Mira. So I feel like General Sorengale does have this like soft place in her heart for Violet because she reminds her of the dad. Yeah, for sure. But General Sorengale's parting words for her daughter after one last look of sadness that is quickly masked is Sorengale's walk or fly off the battlefield, but they are never carried. There's that bitch we remember. (laughs) Jack's like, wow, no wonder you're so warm and fuzzy. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Somehow Violet is still thinking clearly at this point, Mm -hmm. and she is thinking this is our chance to give everyone at Biscaya the choice, finally. Mm -hmm. Or they are no better than leadership. Dragons will vouch for the ones who want to leave. Yeah. Dean says his last action as wing leader will be to call a formation. He is going with them and will have to earn their trust. Dane announces at the formation to all the students that Beskaya's leadership is trying to cover up what is happening on the borders with the Wyvern and the Venon. This is met with general shock and disbelief, and several of the students argue with one another about what to believe. Yeah. The Empyrean has decided it will be up to the individual dragon whether to go or not. They will not interfere, nor will they punish anyone who leaves. Mm -hmm. Taryn also tells Violet once the antidote gets through her system that he lost Solus in a network of caves while he was hunting him. 
So he is still alive, but when he finds him, Solus will suffer long before his death. Mm-hmm. And Darna is also preparing for the flight to Arisha. The elders, though, are concerned. They have never seen a dreamless sleep this long. Yeah. So they're preparing her for the flight, but she's still knocked out. Yeah. Violet tells Taryn to share the memory of Resin, but nothing more. And the dragons can choose to show their riders or not. So she's just like fed up with people not believing Date at this point. She's mm-hmm. like, just show them the memory and yeah. make, they can just decide. Of course, chaos ensues. So Zayden uses his shadows, putting everyone in complete darkness, and then does his old wing leader thing. Yeah, Garrick's like, fucking show off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zayden tells the group that what Dane has told them is the truth. If their dragon has chosen not to show them the truth, then their choice has already been made. So basically, like, Ooh. if your dragon didn't show you what happened at Resin, you're not coming because yeah. that dragon not is coming. not coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how divided that the dragons are about this topic of self-preservation and fighting for the continent itself. Yeah. I feel like it's because they do need dragons on both sides. Like they can't choose one side because they either leave the veil, which is the hatching ground to go fight, or they stay and eventually lose the veil because nobody will be fighting the venom. So it's like they have to be split and they have to do something about both sides. Yeah. But it's interesting that they won't even share the memory with their rider because now everyone is finding out and they still won't share it to them. Yeah. So I can see having some stay, but at least knowing the truth, even though they're being told the truth, but they're not seeing, you know, what other rider. I think too, the rider bond between Violet and Taryn is not normal. Yeah. Whereas like most of the time the dragon is in charge and the rider just comes for the ride. Yeah. You know? Yep. So Zayden tells them that they are at war, a war where they are outnumbered and outmatched in pretty much every way, that the cadets have an hour to decide, and he cannot guarantee that they will live, but they will die here on the wrong side of this war if they stay. So he does mm-hmm. He does say that. So even if their dragon showed the cadets what happened, like those cadets still can decide if they're going to come with them or stay at Beskayeth. Yeah. The professors start coming out into the courtyard and Professor Carr is not on their side, saying that they would do this for the people they've never even met. He is a fireball, but Bodhi takes care of that. Yeah, we learned Bodhi Sigmet here. It's countering Sigmets, which is badass. Yeah, we thought like a couple of chapters ago that it was just like he had firepower, but (laughs) yeah, that's not true. No, it's not true. <laughs> we also find out that Devara was the one who left the news about Zola in Battle Brief. She actually decides to go with them. She's like, actually, there are some teachers who've been waiting to join you. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, Carr is not one of them, which I was kind of disappointed no. to find out because I feel like he did try to protect Violet a little bit from Varish during that punishment. Obviously, yeah. Devar is one of them. I'm hoping yeah. Kaori leaves with them, but obviously we're going to yeah. have to find out because it only says Devara is leaving with yeah. them. And- I can see why Carr was helping Varish, but also won't leave with them because his argument to Varish was, she's so powerful, you're not going to mm-hmm. kill our most powerful weapon in this war. So yeah. I think it does make sense that he was protecting her because he thought he was protecting her for Navar, right. not necessarily. The continent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. True. So Zayden says that the cadets can either defend Navarre or fight for the continent. So like what we've been saying. 200 dragons and 101 riders, almost half of the quadrant were in the air on their way to Arisha. And more were coming, taking a slower route with hatchlings. And I believe they also take three scribes with them and Taryn arranges for dragons to take them too. And Jasenia is one of them. Yes. So that is good to know that the yeah. dragons will fly them just this once. But that's all they yeah. need. Which makes sense to me because that's how our story continues because Jasenia is writing our story. So yeah. she has to come she along. She had to come. <laughs> when they arrive at Ryerson House, she is greeted by her brother who is pissed at Zayden that she needs bending again and then is quite surprised and has fear in his eyes for the large riot she's brought with her this time and that is the end of part one of iron flame why uh yeah violet's like you said you needed riders didn't you (laughs) literally well here they are (laughs) 
End of part one. Wild. I know. Crazy. So now we've left Pisgayeth. What mm-hmm. the fuck's going on? Yeah. I can't wait to read more. Where do we go from here? I have no idea, but let's close this episode so we can find out. Yeah. <laughs> And that's all we have for you today. Please let us know what you think by leaving us a review and comments on any of the platforms you are listening slash watching on or on our social media pages. This helps tremendously to get the word out and lead more listeners to find our show and tune in. Yes, don't forget to email, follow, subscribe, rate us five stars and tell all your friends about us. And we hope the rest of your day is blissful. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Join us next week where we start part five of Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros covering chapters 37 through 41. Happy reading!